Was it screen? Oh. Are we on? One second. <laughs> the monitor's on on out here. <laughs> I'm just like, uh, yeah. <laughs> new, new guy. <laughs> this is the first time doing this or what? <laughs> <laughs> We'll be the last. He'll send someone yeah. else. <laughs> 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 there we go. All right. All right. It's 4 o'clock on Thursday, January 9th, 2020. We have a quorum, so I'll call this library board meeting to order. First item on the agenda, which everyone should have called up on their screens in front of them, is the approval of the agenda as printed there. So I'll Make a motion that we approve the agenda as shown. A second. I have a motion and a second. Any other additions, Paulina? That okay. So hearing none, then all in favor of approving the agenda as shown, say aye. 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 Any uh, any opposed? All right, motion carried. All right. Then we got the introduction of the library board members because we have this is the start of the new year, and so we have. I, a new member on the board. So I think what we'll end up doing is we'll just go around the room and introduce ourselves and we'll start with Dave. Come on. <laughs> Dave Martinka. Paulina Poplaska. Gerilyn Chelberg. Sue Kimmel. Ben Sporgo and I'm currently the, uh, or was the chair, but I'll probably be the chair again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Renee Schmitz. April Eide. Carl Zeidler. And I'm Emily Corbel. Welcome, Emily. Um, it's pretty easy to follow through as we go along <laughs> here, so it's not that difficult. All right, next item up, the election of the officers, the offices of president, vice president, secretary, treasurer. Actually, secretary slash treasurer is one position. A couple of years ago, we oh, voted that okay. in to be in one position. And I can't remember if we called the... Uh, the lead officer, the president, or if it was the chairman and vice chairman, I can't remember. But um, so I've already polled the the uh, board members, and I'm willing to serve again as the president. And Gerilyn has agreed to serve as vice president, and then uh, Dave Martinka is going to serve again as secretary slash treasurer, even though there's really no duties responsible. For that position because april attends the meetings and takes the notes and then when she's not here paulina does it <laughs> but, and uh, i hear you were both missing last time <laughs> no but paulina was trying to april oh. was missing so paulina was trying to give the uh all the presentations as well as take notes so it was fun <laughs> so those well, are those are the potential candidates does anybody else want to chime in for a position I'll make a motion that we accept the slate of officers as described by the chair, Vince Borgold, Gerald Schelberg, and Dave Martinka, in the positions they currently hold, and elect them for the year 2020. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I will second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Last chance to dive in if anybody wants to. Emily? You want to get in? No? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then all in favor of uh, the election of the officers as uh, mentioned in the in the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carried. Uh, item four is the Brown County Library Board representative. That's just for informational purposes only uh, because Carl Zeidler is currently the representative and his term goes through until the end of 2020. And Sue Kimmel is the current alternate and the uh, Brown County Library Board meets on the second Monday in June and November at 7 p.m. at the Brown County Library. Now the next item, the Traverse to Sioux Library Board representation, we're going to need someone from the Traverse to Sioux Library group to be a representative. Uh, Holly Postel was from the Nuon Board and she uh, had done that for the last year or more maybe even and her term expired when she went off the board as of the end of 2019. So the county administrator is looking for individual or individuals 
who would be interested from the library boards in the Brown County. And the meetings are held every third Thursday at 9.30 a.m. in Mankato at the Traverse de Sioux Library Cooperative offices. So Paulina, is there any other, anything else you want to add to that? Um, no, during the summer, once in a while, they do um, explore some of the libraries in Traverse to Sioux. I know this past, I think, April or May, they had a meeting at the um, New Ulm Middle School um, in library, so they do kind of travel around once in a while, but for the most part, it's always at the offices in Mankato. So if anyone is interested, um, we're also seeking individuals from the other Brown County library boards. I know there's no one in Springfield currently interested at this time. Um, so if anyone thinks about it, just let me know and I can um, forward your name on to the Brown County Administrator and that they're the ones who officially um, do the nomination to the Traverse de Sioux Board. Okay. All right. So if anyone's interested, of course, the uh, the time of the meetings will, will have an impact on oh, that. No, yeah, on many people's in the morning, schedules. So yeah. If most people work a uh, a day job, that's going to be difficult mm -hmm. to to attend. So just leave that open for anyone to consider. And if you are uh, would like to uh, be that representative, then just let uh, Pauline know. Does it have to be someone on a library board? I believe so, yes. I think if we have a difficulty, um, it might have to be someone from just the Brown Ca County area, but it's always been a library board member. Does it have to be one person or can it be three or four? Um, we usually have, like Holly was the, um, the main person, but the alternate was from the Springfield Library. So if she wasn't able to attend, you know, I think she called them up and said, would you be able to attend? Okay. So we, there's usually two. But the main person would usually, I think, be at the meetings. Yeah. All right, and we'll move on to the next item, item six, which is the approval of the minutes from the December 12th, 2019 library board meeting. And the minutes are printed there that you could pull up. Um, but hopefully everyone's had a chance to review them ahead of time. And then I'll make a motion that we Accept the library board meeting mini, minutes from December 12, 2019. Do I have a second? I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. Are there any corrections or oversights or edits that need to be made to that? All right, hearing none, then all in favor of approving the minutes from the December 12, 2019 library board meeting say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carried. Now we'll go on to the financial report. Okay. okay, Paulina. Uh, we are 100% uh, through 2019, and our budget is approximately 85.07% um, expended. Uh, we still have several outstanding bills um, that will be paid at the end of this month for um, the the 2019 um, fiscal year. So those will be included at um, our next meeting. I wanna say we probably have about five to 6,000 um, just in bills that I think are still outstanding that we've had the invoices. Um, we did get one, our um, service contract for our um, new computers um, all of a sudden showed up. So that was good. So we hadn't seen it all year. Um, so that is one that we will be paying. It's about, um, a 2000 for last year. Um, and then our contractual maintenance building um, bills in December included just our regular um, remittances to Riverview and Plunkett's. So with that additional bills that are outstanding, then what do you think that'll bump up the um, expenditure? Just a, like, could, to be honest, I'm not exactly sure. I didn't figure that out yet. Yeah. But you'll, we haven't you'll inputted have, them in yet either. <laughs> let us know next yep. month. Yes. What, yep. what well, I'll do two separate was. ones. Yep. Right. But I'm, if I'm hearing you right, it'll be right around 90%. Um, I don't think so. No, probably 90% or so. 90%, yeah. so it'll be I'm under. Thinking. Yeah, okay. it'll be under 100, yeah. definitely. We've been running pretty much to a yeah. 10 to 12% under, under for the yeah. whole year. Mm -hmm. So okay. All right. And we'll go into any other questions for Paulina on the financial report? And we'll go into the librarian's report. Well, why don't you start with the library department activities report and statistics. Sure. Um, so our wiring project of the building began on December 17th, and funding is through Traverse to Sioux Library Cooperative and E-Rate. 
Um, the crew came back today. They're still working on it. It's taking them a little bit longer than they anticipated. Um, we didn't have any Wi-Fi access last week um, because some of the wires were a little bit wrong, um, but they were brought back up um, by um, our IT department here, which was great. They've um, Both Nate and Maria have been wonderful <laughs> in this um, project in terms of kind of troubleshooting some things that have arisen. Um, so the wiring then, that's for Wi-Fi? Or th th that's that? just why they're pulling all the old wiring in the building and replacing it with new wire mm -hmm. wiring at Cat 5, so the speeds yep. will increase. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's um, fully funded through Traverse to Sue. Um, but if, yeah, it's just been interesting. I think they, they're they having some difficulties in the building. Um, so they were talking to some of the conduits, um, how they're laid out, or just more interesting than other places. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, United Way will offer free tax prep at the library on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 9.45 to 4, starting February 11th. Um, and our adult basic education classes um, have been continuing through the year on Tuesdays um, for from 4.30 to 7.30, and those will be ongoing through um, June 5th with instructor Teresa Mosher. Um, for the um, tax preparation, mm -hmm. uh, I know in the past the libraries had copies, paper copies of tax forms and stuff. Are they still going to do that, do you know, or do you think because everything's kind of going away from paper? Or? We um, will still receive some, but we have not received them yet. Okay. I think, yeah. what did Lisa say, February? Lisa, yeah, Lisa orders them, and <coughs> they are sw scheduled to send the week of January 21st, mm -hmm. and they estimated three weeks for shipping. Mm -hmm. So we're just waiting for them to get here. Okay. But we don't get as many as I right. Used to. Yeah. yeah, I mean a lot of it's done online yeah. now right. with uh, mm -hmm. uh, electronic uh, submission. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, just I know we talked about it at last month's meeting. Um, the delivery courier voting uh, concludes tomorrow at four o'clock, um, and then that recommendation um, from the votes will be made to the TDS Library Board next week. And um, I voted, like I mentioned, for Alliance. Um, a voting will, um, it appears by the votes that gold is ahead of uh, both of them. However, a uh, big thank you to um, the director of Traverse to Sue. She was able to um, work with Minitex and the member colleges um, to develop a strategy for delivery to colleges who did not want to see a reduction in how many stops they were going to receive um, to go down to three. Um, so they will be receiving five a week, and um, the result is that we will also receive a five a week with gold. Um, we'll be able to maintain that regardless of which courier is recommended. Um, so we're going from three to five. Is that a, a no? They will, it will be this, no. It will be the same increase uh, as um, gold presented, and it's oh. just the happy coincidence that we're in the same town as MLC. So that um, definitely um, helps us. That they won't change the the change in the courier though will impact. Um, St. Peter um, and the headquarters to, um, headquarters of Martin County, Wasika and Watanwan. Um, so they'll go down from five days a week to three um, with that. And, okay, and but, but it is a cost savings to all the libraries. Right. Yeah. So, and what was the reason again that MLC had was able to um there's um Anne is has worked to um, separate the um the public libraries and the academic libraries into two different contracts, mostly because the academic libraries are funded differently for courier. They, um, the state provides money for academic libraries to receive a courier services, whereas public okay. do not. So it's just a happy, like I said, geography issue that we would um, more than likely have gone down to three if not for MLC. Okay, so if, if gold mm -hmm. wins, we'll still get no, because we are in the same town as MLC, we'll get the five days a week yes. delivery. Mm -hmm. And but if we stick with Alliance, we'll still have the five days a week. Right, with, uh, with, a, with a higher, higher price. Yeah, higher yeah. price. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, that is it. Otherwise, statistics looks 
pr- look pretty um, good. Our overdrive has um, gone up once again. Um, physical is a little down. Um, I was surprised at both computer usage. It's a little down, but December, I think, was pretty busy in terms of the holidays and such. So both our um, dirt counts and computer usage are a little down. We did have a couple days where the wiring oh, project affected. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's we true. were, yeah. yeah. All right, any questions for Paulina on the librarian's report? All right, then we'll move on to the programming side, April. The new Alma Film Society will begin its animated film series on Tuesday, January 14th at 6 p.m. Um, they will be showing a mix of both children's and adult animated films. Um, we want to thank the Optimist Club of New Alm for their continued support of film screenings at the library. Um, they have paid for our film license for the past several years. The art group will resume its meetings on Wednesday, January 15th. The group meets every Wednesday from 2 to 5.30 p.m. through May 13th, with the exception of January 29th, when we'll be upgrading the technology in the meeting room. The Lego Club will meet on Thursday, January 16th from 3.30 to 5 p.m. That is open to children ages 5 and older, and they are welcome to either do the building challenge that is set for the day or um, free building. The library, in partnership with New Alm Community Education and uh, CASEL, um, is hosting a screening of the PBS documentary American Creed on Thursday, January 16th at 1.30 p.m. at the library. In the film American Creed, former U.S. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice and Pulitzer Prize winning historian David M. Kennedy investigate the idea of a unifying American creed. So after the screening of the film at the library, Dr. Timothy Grundmeier, who is a professor of history at MLC, will lead a community conversation about the idea of a unifying American creed and what it means to be an American today. The documentary is a co-production of Citizen Film and WTTW Chicago and is made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting as part of American Graduate Let's Make It Happen. The community conversations are supported by the National Endowment for the Humanities in partnership with the American Library Association, Citizen Film, Facing History and Ourselves, and the National Writing Project. So we want to thank all of those organizations for accepting our application to show this film and host the community conversation at the library. When did you say that was again? The 16th at 1.30? That's right, at the library. Rebecca Novak will present the Capital Dames of Washington, D.C. at the Minnesota Valley Civil War Roundtable on Tuesday, January 21st at 6.30 p.m. On Wednesday, January 22nd at 3.30 p.m., we'll kick off our Wednesday Wonder Club. This is a new children's program. Once a month, second to fourth graders will meet to explore different scientific principles. Um, some of the examples are exploring architecture by making spaghetti towers or studying fractions through making no-bake no treats. Um, we do ask people to register for that so we make sure we have enough supplies. We're hosting our next drive-in movie on Friday, January 24th at 10 a.m. That's open to kids ages 2 through 4. Uh, the kids will have a chance to make a cardboard, cardboard box car park it in front of the movie screen in our meeting room, and enjoy a snack and a half-hour show. And we ask that kids register for that as well. Charlie McGuire, the singing sleuth, will present his Minnesota, Gripping Minnesota Tales on Tuesday, February 4th at 6.30 p.m. He has researched many historical events and people in Minnesota history, and he will present their stories through song. That program, which is free, is made possible by a grant provided through the Traverse to Sioux Library Cooperative, and it's funded with money from Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. So we thank the taxpayers for their support of that program. Any questions on programming? <coughs> All right. We'll move on to the staffing update. Paulina? Okay. Um, April, myself, and um, the HR director met with us um, for a second interview um, with a candidate for the Programming and Technology Services Librarian on um, Monday, Monday, on January 7th. Tuesday. 
Tuesday, thank you. <laughs> um, I don't know what day of the week it is. Um, <laughs> and um, an offer will be extended um, to them. Um, it has not yet, but um, all but the background and everything um, went well. Um, so uh, we hope to do that, I think, tomorrow, um, if, if it hasn't happened yet. Um, the um, library aid position that we have, the part-time library aid position that we have available closes on Sunday. And on Tuesday, Shauna mentioned that we have um, 23 applicants. So we have quite a, a stack. Yep. That's it. All right. Any other questions on the overall librarian's report? And we'll move on to the action item. We've got one today, the resolution 2020-01 accepting the October 7th through December 31st, 2019 donations and memorials. The attached list described donations received from the library, by the library, so sorry, from October 7th through December 31st, 2019. This includes general donations and memorials. The Library Board of New Ulm Public Library accepts these donations with gratitude of the donors and that's if we approve that and then the listing shows uh, either the cash donation or whatever they donated some there's books DVDs pumpkins and then there's a breakdown at the bottom as to uh, uh, how the break uh, how the donations came in so I will entertain a motion then to uh, approve and accept the donations from October 7th through December 31st, 2019. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, then all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carried. Any other business, Paulina? Nope. All right, then we're done. We're at the adjournment phase. Thanks, everyone.